So today's video is very important if you're taking the CELPEP exam. There are five things that I want to point out that students do incorrectly. It's going to cover all modules and the fifth tip is a bonus tip for preparation. So let's start with the first thing. I'm going to talk about reading. Okay, so reading. One major mistake people make is they look at the passage. They read the passage, then they go into the question. So simple strategy I'm going to say is first, of course, look at the question, then go in the passage. Simple logic, you will save time. You don't have much time in the exam. So if you look at the question, you know exactly what you're looking for. You fish out for that in the passage and it's easier, faster that way. But let me go a little deeper into this because what happens now is people read all A, B, C, D options. It's multiple choice. That's also incorrect because if you do that and then you go in the passage, you have 75% incorrect information that you're looking for because A, B, C, D, three out of the four are incorrect. So why look at them? Just look at the main question. The main question that's being asked, look at the keywords there and remember, it could easily be paraphrased. For example, the question could be, Bob wanted to buy a chair that is A, B, C, D. Okay, now in the passage, maybe it doesn't say chair at all. You know, you think it's just such a good keyword, but maybe they say furniture in the passage, or maybe they're saying Ikea items in the passage, right? So we don't know exactly how they will paraphrase it, but be ready for that. So once you look at that question, at least, you know, it's chair, it's something re relevant to that. It could be paraphrased. You go in the passage, find out something relevant related to that, come back and then look at the multiple choice answers. This way, you will have fi found out the correct answer because you're looking not on the subjective options. You're looking for exactly what the chair was, what the furniture was. Once you know the exact correct thing, then you match it with ABCD. And again, once you're unable to find the exact answer, which could very well happen because they're very close together, go with elimination. Eliminate the wrong options, which are completely incorrect, and you will arrive at the right answer. But overall, the strategy, guys, look at the question first, then the passage. Now let's talk about listening. Listening, a major mistake people make is they take notes all the time. This is incorrect, okay? So one of our teachers was asking us the same thing because there was a confusion about taking too many notes and that's what generally people believe, right? Take notes as much as you can from parts one to six. Let me correct that. From parts one to three, you should take almost no notes. From parts four to six, four or five, six, take as many notes as you can. Simple logic behind it. Four, five, and six are difficult. They're also very lengthy. So a normal brain, unless you're Albert Einstein, a normal brain cannot remember all that information. So you will not remember from four onward. You got to write it down. Take as many notes as possible. Imagine if everything is written, then it's basically a transcript and you will get everything correct if you have written it all down. Uh, but from one to three, if you take notes, it is a distraction, right? You cannot multitask always. You're taking notes, you're not listening for the information, you might miss some things that you would have not missed if you didn't take any notes. So don't forget to just do the notes later on, but one to three, it's not too much info, it's small recordings. A human brain is good enough to capture everything from parts one to three. Don't take notes, just focus and concentrate. However, keep your pen and paper in handy because sometimes they'll mention names. They'll mention roads, streets, directions, left, right, and that could be confusing. They could mention dates as well. So just keep it in handy just in case you have to write something important down. Okay, let's talk about writing. Writing part one, um, of course, informal and formal letters, that's one thing. But when we talk about part two, a major mistake that people make is when they support one opinion, they don't talk about the other opinion at all. This is also incorrect. Let me give you guys an example. So again, a typical example is there's two options. You want to build a shopping mall option A or option B, you want to build an amusement park. So if I pick an amusement park, uh, if I'm a normal candidate in CELPIP, I'm going to write the advantages of the amusement park in body one and the same in body two. However, an advanced CELPIP candidate, and this is what we teach our students who have really good marks when they follow the strategy. Body one, you should talk about the positive of your opinion, which is amusement park. Body two, you should talk about the negative of the other opinion, which is the shopping mall. So body one would go something like amusement park is great, 
kids can play. It's going to generate a lot of uh, interest in the summer months. Maybe events could be taking place. It could take place as well. All those good, good stuff. Now we talk about body two, you do the negative of the shopping mall. So now you're going to say with the shopping mall, it doesn't promote any physical activity. It's mostly going to have people walking very slowly, which is not really a walk at all. Number two, another disadvantage could be people are going to waste money. It is something where people are going to uh, splurge and not it's not really sound for their finances. So now you showed the examiner that you're able to do both sides. You're able to show uh, why you support one thing and why you don't support the other. You're more versatile and you will have more vocabulary. Remember, range of vocab, it means range, not just good vocab. So when you have different topics, you're being positive, negative, you're talking about different aspects vocab will come out naturally without you even trying. Okay, speaking, an important part to know about speaking, this is point number four, is be uh, adapted to the situation. So a lot of people talk like robots, okay? So when we're talking to a friend, for example, question number one, give the suggestion to your friend. Most of us do it very robotically. For example, it is like, hey, Bob, how are you? I heard that there was some problem with your knee. I wanted to give you some suggestions. We don't talk like that in normal life with friends. And that's what self was looking at. Are you able to change your tone in a way where it feels natural when you talk to friends? Or if it's talking to a boss or whoever you're talking to in those speaking questions, make sure your tone is adapted to that specific person. For example, if I'm talking to my friend, my tone is going to be something like, Hey, Bob, how are you? I heard that your knee got fractured. That really sucks, man. Is there anything I can do? Well, maybe if there is, let me know. But let me tell you three things that I think would help you out. Number one, and so on. So you see, there's a fluctuation in tone when I'm talking to my friend. It looks realistic, it looks natural, and you have the mark for tone in Celpip. It doesn't usually happen with IELTS, but in Celpip, it is important. So remember to have that tone to secure that mark. It also talks a lot in your, in terms of your confidence and your tone overall. So really important to make sure you follow that in speaking. And tip number five, or a fifth thing that I would say people do incorrectly, is during preparation, we have this concept, and it's mostly from IELTS and, well, from our teachers uh, in schools, that we should listen to news to prepare for our exam. It's okay to some extent, you know, with news you can learn good vocab, you can learn accent, but it's not really applicable in CELPIP. Guys, remember, CELPIP is a different exam. It's not like IELTS. In IELTS, okay, it is kind of dry topics and you can listen to BBC or, and, and so on. But for CELPIP, if you have done any sample questions or if you have done the exam, you would know their questions are really based on how you personally feel. The questions are something like, how does this person feel? Or does this expression that the person showed, showed anger, hatred, happiness, joy, etc. So it's like they are judging if you can understand other people's tone, if you can understand how naturally they feel. And it's all about feelings and interpretation. It's like you are getting the gist of what the other person's expression or feelings are. In news, you don't get any of that. In news, it's all about just plain news, it's robotic speech, it's monotone. There's not a lot of laughs, there's not a lot of feelings involved in news. So what I highly recommend our candidates is to watch television with Canadian TV shows. What shows, I can tell you, there's so many, it could be, it just depends on your interest. If you have Netflix, just type there, Canadian TV shows. If you have YouTube, which everybody has, type their Canadian interviews, Canadian TV shows. Watch those shows online, watch those shows on Netflix because that's where you see interaction. You see people in comedy shows interacting with each other, having jokes. There are expressions that we use daily in those TV shows which show anger, um, love, emotions, all sorts of things and those are the things you are marked at not only in self speaking, uh, a little bit in writing as well, actually, when you when you do informal and formal tones, but also this is what you would have to find out in listening because they would ask you, how does this person feel? Uh, what was his general reaction? Same thing happens in reading. You're reading a passage, there are a few phrases that show expression. And then, especially in part four in reading, you wanna see if one person is positive or the other is negative, what they're really talking about because expressions there are about arguments in part four. 
and so on. So generally expressions, learning them and understanding body language, understanding phrases and how people feel would help you out in all four modules, which is why make sure to stop listening to news and actually watch Canadian television shows and uh, movies. And I'm saying Canadian because self is a Canadian, Canadian exam. So a lot of expressions are based off the expressions that we use here in Canada. I hope that helps guys. I hope these five tips help you change your practice and make it more in tuned with something that is actually productive in getting you a CLB 9 or a CLB 10. And I really hope you like this video. And if you do, please like, share and subscribe. I'll talk to you very soon. Take care.